Alright guys, let's review Terminator Dark Fate, which I just watched, and this one I was really kind of mildly interested in whenever it was announced, but as they kept saying stuff like, oh, Leno, Leno Hamilton's coming back, and also Arnold Schwarzenegger's coming back, and it's going to ignore the sequels except for the first two, like it's, it's going back to a route that's kind of like Halloween 2018, where like they're bringing back the main character again, um... And I felt like it was that similarity to it. Um, and it's it's weird because the first two Terminator movies I like a lot. I need to rewatch them, though. I definitely want to rewatch them um, on, for this channel because I've seen them before and I really did li like the first two a lot. Um, and the sequels I thought were perfectly serviceable, but for me, like, all the sequels are kind of forgettable, but they're serviceable. If that makes sense. Like, I, I liked them okay, but, like, and I never disliked any of them. I just thought they were just, oh, middle-of-the-road movies that are just okay, serviceable, but a little forgettable. And then we got another sequel, which ignores those ones. So it's interesting. But the thing I'll give this movie over, I guess, over the other three sequels is that I really, really appreciated that they brought back Linda Hamilton. Um, I thought that she actually is awesome in the movie. Like, she's great, even though she's got a couple lines where, like, she, you know she doesn't want to say these lines because they're just kind of stupid lines. But I appreciated that they brought her back, and I appreciated that Arnold's back, and I appreciated the fact that this movie, I felt like, out of all the sequels, I felt like this one was... felt like it's almost the most warranted because they do a thing at the beginning of the movie, which I won't spoil, and it's a thing that is a point of contention because people, a lot of people either love or hate this twist at the beginning of the movie. There's a twist where I sat there like, okay, um, at first I wasn't really happy with it because it was such a kind of like, screw you, like last couple movies thing. Um kind of like an Alien 3 thing, where, like, it's, oh, screw you, like, we did this thing, and then this thing happens afterward. So, it's interesting. But but I was also thinking that Terminator 3 did the same thing, but the but with, like, a, the opposite, like, without spoiling it, like, Terminator 3 did the exact same thing, but changed, like, s switched people around. They switched characters around and did this one thing. And... So I feel like I shouldn't be as annoyed, and I thought about that throughout the movie. Like, oh, Terminator 3 already did this, but just the opposite. So it's just another alternate timeline. And whenever I heard, whenever I saw this twist happen at the beginning of the movie, I was like, okay, I, I am kind of annoyed that this happened. But what they do with it, I, for me, I felt like it was more, it was more or less of being, we're doing this twist to piss people off, and more so we're doing this twist to elevate these characters, especially Sarah Connor, who I felt like Sarah Connor is this really hardened character in this movie, where she really is, she really is well done because of the twist at the beginning of the movie, and, and at first when I saw the twist I was like, okay, I don't, I don't really like that, but whenever they show how this character development works with Sarah Connor, I feel like it makes more sense. Um, and it makes it seem like this is more important to her character, because I felt like if this thing didn't happen in the beginning of the movie, Sarah Connor would have just been, like, the same. So I do like that this Sarah Connor is more of a hardened character, and I, and even though she was like that in Terminator 2, I think that this is cool that they continue on with that. And that's why this, this, this feels like there's a reason why they ignore the other sequels. And I felt like this one, even though it has the sequelitis like the other sequels do, where, like, it's kind of forgettable... I feel like this one still has, for me, a lot more, like, heart to it from what I remember from the sequels. I feel like this is one has more heart to it than, like, the last couple. Um, like, Linda, Linda Hamilton is really, really great in this movie, and she really, really, to me, gives, gives a lot of credibility to this movie as opposed to the last couple, where it's like, this one, it feels like there's more of a reason for it to be made, even though it shouldn't have been made, if that makes sense. Like, I thought that this one worked in that way, and there's a lot of other positives I can give this movie. I thought the action sequences, while not practical, like T2, are still great. They're CG, but still, 
I think that the opening action scene is really fantastic. I was I was actually shocked how great this opening uh, chase scene was between these characters and the new Terminator, um, played by Gabriel Luna. And that's where I'll go into next. Gabriel Luna as the new Terminator. At first, watching the trailers, I was like, this looks lame. This guy looks like he's not intimidating at all. But watching the movie, I thought he was actually really awesome, and I liked him a lot. Um, and I did like these new main characters. And I liked how it's about just these three characters on the road, running away, um, between Sarah Connor, Danny, this girl who is is kind of like how... Um, how she was in the first movie, like, she's important where the Terminators are coming back to kill her, and then you've got Grace, who is this kind of human Terminator, and I like that they did a human Terminator thing, too, where, like, she's partly human, partly Terminator, I thought that was pretty cool, and I liked her performance a lot, I thought she was really good, the actress played Grace, but I thought, I, I thought all three of the girls did great, um, and I just like that it's, like, kind of a road trip movie of them, like trying to escape from this Terminator, and they have, and they eventually find Arnold and recruit him as well. And I just think that it's really, it's well done. And I thought that I really like these characters. I liked what they go through. Um, I like the acting a lot. Um, I like the action sequences a lot. I just feel like it, it is just one of those movies that's gonna be forgotten though. Like for the overall Terminator movies, like of course it's not gonna be T one or T two. But I feel like, in terms of credibility, this one is probably the most creditable, like, sequel, I think, like, out of all of them. But again, I haven't re I haven't watched those in a while, like, 3, 4, and 5, so I need to rewatch all of them. But as of this review video, I think this one is the best one since T2. And it's not T2, but it still has a lot of solid things to it. The characters, the action... Um, I feel like this just has more credibility. It feels like it has more of a reason to exist, um, even though it's bombing. But that's because the Terminator franchise has never after... Like, it's weird. They've gone with this franchise for so long, and now we're at a time where, like, if a, movie's, if a movie doesn't make even close to what it's... Um, to what it was its budget, it bombs, they're not going to make another one. And I feel like... I think they said that they're not making another one either, so... Um, yeah, overall, that that sucks because I like this one a lot. So, um, overall, this one I did like, even though it does have some forgettableness about it, but it's a good sequel and the most solid one compared to all the others and the best one since T2, even though it's not T2, of course. But that is my review on Terminator Dark Fate. Tell me down below what you guys think of the movie, and thank you guys so much for watching. And this is all over. I am going to kill you. I understand.